There's only one more week until Lardu releases, so just hold on a little bit longer. And in the meantime, we've got some new VCs for you this week, including an ice sculpture and a hot mom. As always, I'd like to thank the people at War of the Visions Calc for the information used in this video. And I also want to shout out a new patron that I have, Pankatir. Thank you so much for your contribution. And if you're interested in my Patreon, then you can take a look at the link in the description. Okay, so first we're going to talk about Glacial, who is a new MRVC slash Esper combination. And it's a pretty straightforward card. It has average stats uh, for attack and ma magic. It's not weighted towards one too heavily. It gives you ice attack on the bestowed ability and party ability is also ice attack. And then maybe possibly, who knows, in the future, it could get an ice resistance 15% for all your ice allies. So it's it's really just, you know, do you have ice units on your account? Do you play regularly with them? Would you ever make a team of three ice units? Well, then, I mean, this is a card that you could consider and it's an Esper that you could consider. So there's really not a lot to talk about here with comparisons or whatever. It's, it's really going to be up to you and your account and, and what you're looking to do. So for the, uh, sorry, <laughs> the Articuno, I forgot to put that in there. Uh, this is the Esper, it's not Articuno, it's Glacial. And it, it has, again, pretty middling stats. They're not actually bad stats for an MR Esper. The agility is is fine. Um, it's higher than some UR Espers and then not as high as like Chocobo and Red Chocobo, but you know. The Evocation spell is actually kind of interesting, especially, I haven't done much testing with the new and improved Evocation magic, but you know, hear me out here, 30% chance to inflict stop, um, and it's an AOE, you know, it's like, hey, whoever has this has Judgment Blade, that's a, you know, 100% hit chance, so if evocation magic is actually a thing ever, then this one's kind of neat that way, and, you know, you could really tick off people that already hate you and you're aggress, you could, you know, possibly make them even more furious with you. The board nodes on this Esper are pretty good as well. So this is a new thing that we're going to be seeing soon, which is the elemental attack up. So this is ice attack up. It's going to work for any of your elemental abilities. If a, if a unit has an ice attack with the blue icon, then they're going to get the advantage from this. Now an ice unit using their regular attack will not uh, get the 25% ice attack up because their regular attack is not uh, an ice attack. It's just a regular attack. But you also get some missile resistance and 15% attack up, uh, which are fine nodes. And then even on here, if you were ever going like super hard against a wind team, well, you've got wind resistance and wind killer. And then otherwise, you know, um, just some random abilities that, that most espers get. So all in all, again, so specific it's it's really specific is this a good esper i mean yeah if you have ice units it's it's a fine esper uh, especially for something like class match if you were going to put this on to an ice unit uh, and you wanted to keep your cost down so this is the black rose of the battlefield ur vc and this is actually going to have been on a lot of people's radar it's something that people have been talking about for a long time not only because of the the female that is on the artwork of this card uh, but because of the abilities that it provides so let's take a closer look and and discuss you know why did it get so much hype so it is an interesting card in that it gives no attack it gives a bunch of magic some spirit some hp uh, but no attack and that automatically limits you to be putting this onto uh, to units that use magic as their driving force. And if you put it on an attack based unit, then I mean, you're really reaching at that point. The bestowed ability is only for units that use staffs as their weapon and it increases your accuracy. And this is always a really handy bestowed ability to have because in, in things like PVP, when you're going against evade or any, any content we're going against evade, but I, I particularly think about like class match where you're really trying to fit, you know, like function of a party ability with the uh, the tech to fight an evade team, then the cards like this are really nice. So again, it's very specific. So this doesn't even work on mace units, uh, but it, it is going to be a really powerful bestowed ability. The party ability is agility up. Okay, there we go. There, there it is. So for those of you that didn't get Scions, this is obviously a really big uh, priority. Although Scions had a little more usability I would say in that we just have so many attacking units and so many people use attacking units rather than magic units. Uh, at least you see way more triple attacking parties than you do, um, you know, triple magic parties. So fitting an attack uh, oriented card on, into a, a party is often an easier thing to do than fitting a magic card like 
if you have to pick between this and Holiday Party for the party effects, then I mean, I know that those are a mace card and a staff card, but still like there's there's uh, it's going to be harder to fit this card into your party than it is uh, Scions, but this is not limited and we can all get this card. We can all raise this card. And if you're going to get this card, you need to max it. You need to go all in because this really is a powerful ability. There was a very good Reddit post about this today, and I want to say it was by I'll link it in the description for sure. And it was by Raindoll or, some, or something along those lines. He's got a YouTube video as well so you can check that out but he makes some great uh, points about how this um, agility could affect your team and uh, just so you know it affects the the base stat of a, of a unit so that's their um, their level stats and their job level stats but not their their node stats so if they get agility on their or their job board this 15% doesn't affect that uh, so units with really high base agility which I, I think uh, I think Cecil's one of them uh, would get more agility from this from someone that has a bunch of agility on on their board um, and I can't think of a unit that does has that right now but just so you know and then uh, there's a global exclusive bestowed ability and it's for Helena uh, I wonder why and it's agility up so she gets even more agility up which is really neat uh, and there's, there's another really cool reddit article that I'll share in the description from a long time ago actually um, and I'm totally blanking on the name of the the poster uh, but they did this really in-depth analysis comparing uh, Helena and the um, and Ayaka uh, in the, the support roles that they play. Uh, and if you didn't know, uh, Helena has a just truckload of magic. Like she has uh, one of the highest magic stats in the game. So she's kind of an interesting unit. Um, and for her to get an agility buff, it's often the stat that people are missing. So that's pretty cool. That makes that's that's definitely something to consider. And she would get this uh, shadow flare ability that we're going to look at next. So if you equip this VC to a unit that uses staffs and their main job, well, you're going to get this shadow flare ability. It has a pretty sizable range. You get two casts. The AP cost is is 35, and it's going to deal small damage. Uh, it has a chance uh, to well, I guess 100% chance to knock back units and then decrease their area resistance for three turns. So any AP we effects are going to do extra damage to them so if you hit them with this and then hit them with it again and then or you follow up with a calculator or maybe a dragon dive uh, or whatever else a cane lb um, you're going to be doing even more damage and i really love this ability so it gives you some farming potential for pve it gives you some aoe potential and just more casts uh, it gives an offensive ability to units with not a lot of offensive abilities and then it has these cool little uh tech things like the knockback can be pretty relevant in pvp the uh the decreased area resistance having these little imperils make uh can make your team building and your strategizing your uh your ability turn off and on uh choices they can make them all the more impactful and I love that something like this has entered the game so this is a super cool ability and I'm very excited to see people use it uh, but not against me. Uh, and then the possible maybe future level 99 buff for dark units only is to increase their accuracy by 25 and that is a very very good effect. If you were using this on a dark magic unit uh, then which huh is there a is there a dark magic unit? I guess there's one coming up, but he doesn't use staffs. Uh, but the, if you did use this on a dark magic unit, then at the very least they would all get some accuracy. Or if you put this on a staff unit and then you know run your run your Dwayne, run your Kane, run your Super Stern, whatever you want your Venera, then they're gonna get the accuracy, and your staff unit can be just shadow flaring everybody left, right, and center. So for some comparisons, we'll look at the Scions card from the FFT collaboration. Now this is my biggest regret ever in this game. I pulled this card on the first collaboration and then I didn't build it. It was hard to do back then. And then in the second collaboration, we could farm the shards via the Whimsy Shop and I decided not to because I'm a doofus. Uh, but this card is, is really awesome. It gives you a bunch of attack, it gives you okay magic, and then it gives you slash attack bestowed and party ability 15% agility, so same as Black Rose. This card could be used on a bunch of different units. Uh, you could even put this on like a Howlet and you would still benefit from it. It wouldn't be as terrible as putting Black Rose onto an attacking unit for the agility buff. If you really wanted to fit agility in, this card works way better than Black Rose does. And you could even throw this on somebody like Ayaka, who's going to be a supporting unit and doesn't need the pure magic 
quite as much, although of course you want to get, you know, you always want to have good stats. But uh, the point is that this is easier to fit as an agility card, but this is a limited card. We have no idea when it's ever going to return. If you don't already have it, then Black Rose is obviously a super powerful card and something that you want to get. We also have beloved sidekick Chocobo, uh, who is not proven to be a beloved sidekick to me as I have maxed him with shards but have yet to pull him. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of calling him into question here in terms of how, uh, how good a sidekick he is. But if this card is, is pretty insane too, it gives you 10 defense, which again, just really good bestowed abilities on all these agility cards and then 10% agility so you do miss out on the agility there you get a balance of stats at the top but uh, the defense I think that's actually pretty huge uh, it's an MR card and then that's where I I really see the value here and this is why I'm gonna be okay not going for Black Rose is because I, uh, I, I I'm gonna get this guy eventually and then the main place that I want to use an agility card it's class match. That is by far the number one place I want to use it and I'll probably have to work with the cost restriction and that's why I think MR Chocobo is going to be the way to go for me, but uh, I'm certainly not disparaging anybody from getting Black Rose at all. Now if we look at the pros and cons, it's really simple for our friend Articuno here. We've got a card that's just great for ice units and, and it's a solid Esper, it's got okay stats, it's got uh, some good nodes but it, it just really what it comes down to is you either have ice units or you don't and you either love your ice units so much that you want to support them with this card uh, or you don't love them that much and you're just fine with getting this in, in its natural time. As for the Black Rose of the Battlefield card, well, it's a little more difficult to decide with this one. It's just so good. It has, like, agility is one of the most powerful stats. Uh, it's possibly the only card that you can get right now in Max that will give you agility, so that's worth a lot. Uh, and it's, you know, one of the only cards for the foreseeable future. It's great for every single game mode. It's especially big in live PvP. It gives you a bestowed ability that's amazing. It gives you accuracy on your bestowed as well. And it's just like a, it's a really powerful magic card. Uh, the one thing I want to say about it is that it, because it's so, it's so specific, again, uh, it's really hard to fit into a combination in PvP, uh, you're gonna have some defensive VCs, or maybe you're going to have a vow of love on someone, or maybe if it's auto, uh, maybe you're going to have offensive um, VCs, and, and this is going to make a huge difference sometimes. If you're going against really slow teams, this can make a big difference. If you're playing manual, this could make a big difference, but if you're not actually getting extra turns or if the agility is, is not working out for you, then is it worth losing, like let's say your your one magic card was gonna be Trousseau and you're losing out on a bunch of magic attack for your spells. Is that better off than this card? I don't know. That's where it's gonna be really tricky and I really can't, while I can generally, generally recommend this as a good card uh, overall, I can't recommend that, that you pull it unless you Personal, personally are okay with it and your account is okay with it uh, and I don't know what your account looks like so I you know, can't really can't really help you out there uh, so <laughs> a little bit of a cop-out but whatever uh, so uh, the the glacial the it's, it's a creepy bird too uh, it's a no for me you have to you just get it when you get it unless you really love ice uh, and then the black rose I say I say yay if you have a staff uh, unit that you use regularly uh, if you play live PvP and you don't have scions um, if agility is a problem that you've been wanting to solve then you could get this card but remember that we have Lardu the the fire pugilist guy coming out next week he's the the best unit uh, so hotly anticipated by me uh, so you know you might want to save uh, but more importantly there's also the FF10 collaboration the near collaboration and so many other things and EX jobs coming up that um, you've really got to make your your decisions now that uh, you're gonna sleep with so uh, remember uh, at the end of the day it's up to you uh, but I hope that this has been helpful to you um, and that it, it's going to help you make a decision. Um, and I want to know what that decision is because it always fascinates me to hear people's reasoning. Uh, 
account specific reasoning of why they went for a card why they didn't go for a card you know why did they decide to to save longer uh, and then how it actually goes so if you actually get these cards or not um, let me know I, I, I'm honestly curious and we can have a nice little discussion in the comments below all right that's gonna be it for me I'm gonna do my class matches and go for a little walk so we'll see you next time Thank you